Oh, hello. It's time for an Equity Guru Investor Roundtable. A little different today. I'm Rob. That's uh, Chris Perry's photograph over there. A little bit under the weather. Yep. We're hoping he's back very soon. In the meantime, we have expertise living in the penthouse. That's right. I'm stuck in the basement by myself. Galen is upstairs here. And Vichelle, the chart master, chart attack master, is up there in the far corner. We're talking about Nomad royalty this is a royalty streaming company they're into the whole gold and silver thing picking off some cash investing it is nsr on the tsx vincent metcalf is the ceo out of montreal what exactly are these people doing uh michelle so i think uh, we should probably say you know just uh I am a shareholder of this company. Oh, uh, get that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I should probably mention that, but. Um, for how long? For how long? Uh, it's been for a while, actually. I think it was, okay. uh, yeah, it's Just been for it. over a year. Definitely over a year. Right. Look at you, uh, go. you guys sort of know my take on gold and silver. Um, I guess, you know, maybe I'm a bit biased. <laughs> Just a silver little. Silver and gold, <laughs> silver and gold. <laughs> but, it could be for a life. For silver and gold, I love my royalty and streamers. And I always tell people, if you are going to invest in this, you know, I love the physical, right? Don't get me wrong. Your physical bullion, uh, you know, the, the, gold, the gold and silver in your hand, best feeling. And I think that's a great thing to have. But if you want to invest in, in stock markets, um, I love the royalty and streamers because I think it's probably the best business probably ever invented. And I think there was an article about that wow. saying how uh, <laughs> royalty and streamers was like the best sort of business ever. Everyone's heard of the large company franco nevada but yep. we all know mining is expensive right Hugely. it's very expensive there's a lot of costs involved a lot of uh, risk a lot of risk yeah exactly and what what these royalty and streamers do is allow you to basically play precious metals and other uh, commodities but reduce that mining risk which is in my opinion one of the best you know uh ways to invest in this space um, a while back ago, I wrote this article about how I invest in gold and silver, and I highlighted why I love royalty and streamers. Um, you know, uh, a royalty and streamer is limited to the exposure of capital costs and operating costs, and positively, they're leveraged to gold, they're leveraged to exploration and expansion, and they also do pay out a dividend. So it's the best of both worlds. If gold's going up, the stock will do well. If gold's going down, Great management will, you know, basically make deals to create more royalty and streamers preparing for the next cycle. But the best thing, you know, again, is limiting those costs. And a lot of these royalty and streamer companies, and again, there's like a handful of like really big ones, like your Franco Nevadas, your Wheaton Precious Metals. Uh, I would be adding Nomad, you know, royalties into that uh, uh, group as well. A lot of these companies basically have to, like 30 or less employees maybe even 20 or less, right? So um, it's a very, uh, you know, the costs are very limited. Low and, overhead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, essentially, you know, what they do is they sort of act as a bank, I would say, but they, they give money out to these explorers or, or producers saying, hey, look, we'll fund this program. We'll fund this mine if you're about to go into production. But you got to promise us that you give us a royalty that once you're done, Per, uh, or once you're finished making the mine and you're actually producing, we're going to get 2%, 10%, whatever, right? Whatever's dealt with off, off your profits for every ounce of silver or every ounce of gold uh, that is produced. And it's until the mine, basically the whole mine life, right? Uh, great business, in my opinion. Here's Nomad's assets. So these are their producing assets. But as you can see, there's actually... Uh, more streams coming online, right? Because they're they're in con under construction, or there's some developing. So the the whole idea is to basically fund these projects that are about to go online, and it'll add more royalty and streams uh, to the Nomad portfolio, which is great for shareholders in the long run. If you are big into gold and silver, and you can see they have assets in Mexico, in the U.S., uh, in Brazil, I believe that's Chile there, and a few African countries there. I'll just give you guys. What well, countries those are? Okay, maybe not Africa. Yeah, sorry, Ivory Coast uh, yep. and South Africa and Australia. Yep. So 
you can see the streams here. They are bringing in streams, some of them at $400 an ounce of gold in parts of Africa, uh, which is pretty crazy. But um, this is why I really love uh, royalty and streamers. And um, basically, if you're bullish gold and silver, um, you want to look at some of these plays because I think this is the safest way to play the precious metals market. Um, I could bring up inflation, but maybe Galen, do you want to bring that up? Or? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> We're talking about the guy Galen, who, by the way, who, if I'm not mistaken, about two months ago on this program, bought a block of silver that's in his closet. Yes. Oh, I, I, as 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 Vishal has stated um, it, for himself, I'm I'm also a commodities buff, but uh, all the only ways I really would like to invest in it, um, you know what, investing in companies directly, sure, why not? The Explorer is great. You know, you really got to know your stuff though, and you yeah, got to sure. be able to take that risk and take that ride. But for me, uh, the safest way that I think about this whole thing is going out and buying the ingots straight from the mm -hmm. uh, metals exchange. Uh, no, don't do futures. You'll just get screwed. Um, you like to clean it. Yeah, exactly. I like to sit home and polish it, just like Ebenezer oh, Scrooge. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, that and also investing in royalty streamers, because basically what these guys do, as Vishal had stated, is that they're they're bankers, basically. But they go around and they use their expertise to to pick the cherries and go like, OK, this company is really close to something. They actually have something under the ground. There's something going to happen. We like what's going on. So we're going to give them a bit of cash and and perhaps some advisory support or whatever. But in return, they're going to give us a royalty royalty on whatever they produce for the remainder of the life of the mine. That's not always the case, but it's basically the deal that goes in usually when, when they do it. Now, as also Vishal stated, they have got properties all over the planet, Africa, uh, South America, and also in Canada and the United States. They also are developing uh, pro projects in Australia and more in Canada. Um, actually, they're developing the projects in Canada. I'm sorry. There we go. Um, so anyway, um, they're in BC as well. Yeah, they're in BC with Blackwater. And Blackwater's got some good news, some catalyst news going on in terms of permitting and such. So it looks pretty interesting what's happening there. Uh, what I like about these companies is there's profit already at hand. And when you put money into these companies, you're trusting their due diligence, but they usually hire pretty smart cookies to go out and find the real money makers. And basically, they just sit and eat the profits. Uh, so what happens is with these kind of companies, you get a dividend. So you don't have to worry about growth or anything like that, although that would be a nice thing to happen. But the dividend is the key. You're getting money at every quarter, uh, f all year, every year, for the rest of your life, as long as you hold shares in the company. Now, with a share consolidation, it used to be kind of a small dividend pain. They, it was like 0 .005 cents per share up until August 2020. No, sorry, up until May uh, 2021, where they did a share consolidation and brought that figure up to $0.05 cents a share on a quarterly basis, so that's 20 bucks per year, or 20 cents per year, not 20 bucks, sorry. Uh, and and that's, a, that's, a nice, that's a nice tint. If you're spending, you got a lot of shares, that's some money coming through the door. And it's, it's something you can count on, basically. Not something that's going to go away, because once a company starts producing, there's not a lot of um, variability within that payout. You know, they've, they've, they've done all their research, they've done their projections. So basically it's going to be that same amount every year. So this is kind of like a retirement thing almost. So it's a nice place to be in and Nomad Royalty has built themselves into this position to where they're playing with the big boys with Silver Wheat and the rest of these kids. So they've actually got a thing going on. Now, uh, with the present state of inflation as we see it with 7% coming out the door of the last year, highest since 1982 as Vishal is showing from the CNBC article there. Um, we've got a nice uh, setup happening for gold. Uh, it is the risk off asset. It really is. And it may not have won a lot of, uh, you know, f uh, favor because everyone's gathering towards Bitcoin. I think the Bitcoin thing is a bit of a false market. That's me playing the guy on the contrarian side of the room. Gold and silver are the ones that will remain forever. The one that you can go to in case the dollar goes really to shit. Inflation hedge. Yeah, it's, it really is a, a, a constant inflation hedge. And as I said, don't buy into the fucking futures. Buy the, buy the ingots. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
the Nomad Royalty plays into that, and with the current trend that we're seeing, we're going to see a lot of performance in the area of gold, so the, the dividends are only going to get better for these guys, and they don't yep. even have to find more material to make that happen. It's just going to increase with the price of gold. Uh, but they are, as Vichelle said, bringing up new, get, new kids through the pipeline, and we're going to see more stuff happening throughout the year. Now, a bit of a downer, and this is something Vachelle and I yep. talked about. He was the one that brought it up. They had a bit of a financing at the top at, at very recently. Yesterday. Uh, yesterday, there we go. With some institutional money coming through the door, adding what, $40 million to the coffer? I'm going to bring million it over there. Finance. Yeah, <laughs> which you know, is a nice thing, but unfortunately it kind of diluted the share count. Yeah. So I don't know what the dividends are currently. And there's also options out for them to pur purchase 15% more. So that might kick a hole in a little more of the dividends. What we can count on though to offset this as as i was talking about earlier is the increase in gold prices and also the development of further resources for the company this is a nice safe bet um this is something you can put in and as long as you know that it's producing you can kind of count on it as a retirement fund and you know 40 million is a, it's a pretty good chunk of money i think they can obviously get some catalysts going and fund some other products. Absolutely, because what the current, current price marking cap, Jesus, the market <laughs> cap of the company is half a billion at this point, right? Holy mackerel. That's yeah. a big yeah. So it's a, size, it's a sizable company, but 40 million is nothing to sneeze at in terms of development costs. So exactly. I was jotting notes here and just want to remind folks, we've got NSR on the TSX that is... Uh, the, the, this company that we're talking about, Noble, yes, or, or sorry, Nomad Royalty, Royalty and Streaming, uh, NSR and the TSX under Vincent Metcalf in Montreal. So how much? We start with Fischel. Well, uh, let, let's quickly uh, look at the charts if that's... Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, did, we, oh, did I forget the charts? He, he's going to bring in the charts and he's going to tell us how much he's going to invest. I forgot the charts. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll tell you what, just, give, give me the charts, off. give me the charts and then roll into your $7,500 selection. Uh, it's probably going to be no surprise. I think you guys can guess how much I'll be putting in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, let's quickly take a look, you know, at gold, silver, very, very quickly. But um, as Galen mentioned, gold no, getting... No rush. No rush. I didn't mean to jump jump <laughs> past the charts. That was just, that was just senility. Well, well, gold is getting a nice, actually, pop um, these past few days here. Uh, it was looking, I don't want to say grim, but we were retesting a breakout zone. Um, and after what Powell said... Uh, he's sort of turned a bit dovish. The U.S. dollar is now breaking down, which is great for, obviously, the precious metals. And then we got our inflation number today, right? So at, at the time we're recording, that's when this 7% uh, inflation uh, reading came out. And uh, I'm just thinking, you know, if you're looking at that and you're like, oh, crap, maybe the Fed is losing control of inflation, although the narrative is, again, you know, don't worry, the uh, inflation is going to taper off sometime mid-2022. Yeah, uh, whatever. But <laughs> yeah, but if you're worried about that, you're probably going to be saying, hey, uh, maybe I'll pick up some commodities, right? Uh, I think precious metals are the best uh, in terms of the inflation hedge, so you have some money running into gold and silver. And again, folks, if, if you don't want to listen to Galen and I, um, there's a guy named Ray Dalio. Uh, you guys probably heard of him. He was the he's head smart, of the uh, dude. largest uh, hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates. And um, he's written a book all about why he likes gold, because he thinks that there's a, a not just an inflation issue, but maybe a central bank sort of currency issue. But I think, you know, inflation is sort of tied to that because it is all this extra money printing, I guess. Um, so keep an eye out on that. There's a lot of big money uh, looking at gold. Uh, you know, central banks are even buying gold, right? So I think we should mention that as well. It's not something too many people uh, talk about, but people like Dalio, Stanley Drunkenmiller, uh, a few other uh, billionaires out there are also adding gold to their portfolio. Um, meanwhile, there's other people who think it's just like a pet rock, right? Because it doesn't yield much, yeah. but... In a, in a low yield environment, you know, when you're not getting much in bonds, um, you might as well put some money in, in gold. And I think gold has actually held up relatively well because the bond market, the yields on bonds has been going up uh, because people have been predicting that the Fed might uh, uh, raise rates. So uh, the 10 year yields at like 1.7 percent, like it broke out. Um, you would expect gold to maybe start to sell off because money would look into bonds for safety rather than gold. Gold tends to do well or better in a lower yield environment because if there's, um, you know, there's not much difference, right, in terms of uh, yield because gold is technically, it doesn't yield anything, right? Um, so you put your money in bonds if it's yielding something. 
Um, but even with that rate, you know, even with that rising in yield, people were assuming gold would be selling off, but we haven't seen that. Gold is holding on strong. So I think that says something. That's a very strong signal there. And uh, so far, pay attention to gold, folks. I know it's a it's a boring market at times, or it's a frustrating market. Maybe that's the right word. Yeah, but in uh, the, in the end, uh, we we look at it very finitely because yeah. there's a lot of day trading out there, and the idiocy of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency going up forty thousand percent, which is completely fucking unsustainable, by the way. Just so you want, just so you know, this is something that's due to implode because of the way it's been acting on the markets. However. <laughs> You don't have to listen to me on this. Gold <laughs> over the th last 20 year period has gone up 500%. 537%. It's just gone up steadily, right? It's just increased and it will continue to do so. This is something that is long term, that's value based, that has a grasp in reality, has a foot in reality. This is something that you can hold on to. This is not Bitcoin where some jerk you know, d pretends he's dead and the whole fucking valuation drops out <laughs> of the actual currency. This isn't that stuff. This is real. This has a real world, real, world real world application and a real world presence, just like silver. Yes, I, I, I think silver is a bigger opportunity for personal ownership, but yeah. gold is definitely something to get into commodity wise. I'm that silver, baby. Oh, yes, I, will I, I ever? Baby. He's yeah. going home to the closet tonight. I can see well, my face. <laughs> Rub the ingot, baby. Yep. yep. So, you know, talking about silver, just quickly, the silver chart looks even better, in my opinion. It looks like we're due for a breakout here. Uh, we've been talking, you know, in past shows about this previous support here at the $21.50 to $22 level. It looks like we're holding it, folks. Um, nice push off that level. So that is our major support level, and that is $22 American, uh, XAG or, or silver. So it's looking really good. And I think um, in a few weeks time, we're gonna be talking about uh, silver above 24 bucks. If we can get a close here above 2330 zone here, which uh, is looking very likely. Um, now let's look at NSR. And um, you guys sort of know, I like my chart patterns. I like my breakouts. And uh, if we didn't get today's price action, I mean, that looked like a breakout. That was looking really good, especially at the $10 zone, which is a, Pretty psychological, um, uh, important number, uh, big round number, ten dollars. Um, and I guess the important thing is this is why I like to wait for breakouts as well uh, for my entries. Uh, and then the news came out about the you know the the nine dollars and ten cent uh, financing again. Ouch! Liking um, that the dilution and maybe the, the discount there. Um, but I think it just gives us a better opportunity for people who aren't in the company just yet. Um, obviously, you know, if you got in when it was bottoming here, you're, you're, you're okay. Um, but it looked like, you know, we were in a very, very nice breakout, especially with gold and silver prices rallying. Um, and then that news came out and that sort of, well, I mean, the stock fell close to what, 10%, 9% uh, on that news of financing. But on the positive side, they have 40 million in the bank now. Uh, and they're, they're likely to, you know, use it to initiate some sort of catalyst. Um, if you are big into gold and silver in the long term, um, I think this is a company that you want to hold, not as a trade, uh, but something that will keep growing. And, you know, if you look at a few other uh, royalty and streamer companies, uh, a few of them are trading above $100. Uh, most of them are trading above 20 a few over 50 So a lot of growth potential, uh, as long as you have good management doing the right thing and buying uh, royalty and streamers and doing deals when the market is hot or not hot, right? Because that's the benefits of a royal and streamer. You can bring out catalysts um, when gold's not doing well. So you're going to drop a little do -si dough on us today or what? You got uh, yeah, bucks. I'm going all in. Uh, I like, what? you know. I'm sorry, what? I'm going uh, 7,500. I'm going all in. Oh. I, I like these wow. I, you know, that's what gold I mean. and silver, I love. When we talk about the juniors, you know, I put some money in there. But when it comes to, like, the safest way to play it, uh, I would love the bullion. Uh, but... I love my royalty and streaming companies, and I think this is the proper way to play um, them the medals. This will be first seen on a Monday, so people are going to start their week, and they're going to watch this, and they'll be like, oh, my God, jumping on this sucker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, Galen. All right. Well, um, since Vishal has decided to throw himself headlong into the fray here with, with 7,500, I'm, I'm feeling a bit left out, so I, I may yeah. consider doing something similar. Um, now, my idea would be that you know at 0.5 or 0 
at five cents, I can say this, at five cents per share um, and then 20 per cents per or 20 cents per year, it doesn't add up to a lot of cash coming out the door, but it oh, is yeah. cash coming out the door, which is, you know, for me, approximately 150 bucks if you buy in now. Now, that I could turn into another 15 shares and gain a little bit more money. So that's basically how I would play this. I would take my dividends for the first little while and just roll it into more stock and continue to build my base. Dividend reinvestment plan. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I've got the value of the stock right there anyway, and I can turn around and sell if I need the cash, but I'm gonna turn this dividend and I want it to make money for me. So I'm basically just gonna repurchase stocks all the way along. So yeah, I'm gonna drop 7,500 in too, but just sort of turn around my dividends and keep building that base. Let this do it on its own and then eventually Hopefully that'll just result in lots of stuff when I go to uh, retire. Long-term baby. Yeah. Wow. Long-term plays from the fellas. I'm not sure I can recall. It's got to be at least a couple months since we had the fall in. Mm-hmm. From I was going to say this might be the first. Posse. Yeah. Chris, yeah Chris has decided not to be like left out. So he's dropped in 75 too. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Speaking on behalf of yeah. Chris Perry. I can, I can feel it right now. His need to be part of the group. Like, Come on, one, let's do it. There was one up two, three months ago because we had the we had the hand kissing and stuff yes. going on for one company, but I can't remember which one it was. I can't remember. Um, that's pretty cool, boys. Uh, going hard into the uh, Nomad Royalty. NSR on the TSX out of Montreal. Vincent Metcalf is the CEO. Wowzy, wowzy, wow, wow, wow. Uh-huh. Between between your speech impediment, uh, Galen, and me forgetting was, where constant. I was and who, and who was on the show, yeah. between the two of us, we somehow got through it. Thanks totally. To I got to stop drinking Michelle. coffee, man. Michelle's carrying the show here. Uh, <laughs> all right, folks. Remember, we cannot guarantee results based on our education and expertise. Uh, we can we can help. Yeah. But you need to do your own homework. You need to do your own research. And past performance does not guarantee future results. Nor does uh, what we tell you. We're trying, but we can't guarantee it. That's just life. So uh, do a little homework and take care of business. NSR TSX. It is uh, Nomad Royalty. And we'll see you on the very next Equity Guru Investor Roundtable.